Hey guys, Mr. Backer here. Lesson 1.7 is about transformations of functions. Uh, it's not on the screen, but the things we're going to look at in this video are called rigid transformations. Three objectives. First thing we're going to do is use vertical shifts to help us graph some functions. Second thing will be using some horizontal shifts to graph some functions. And then we're going to be looking at some reflections as well. The first type of shift that we're going to take a look at is a vertical shift. So there's two things that can happen with a vertical shift. We can either move our graph up or we can move our graph down, depending on what's happening in the function. So for each one of these, we're given h of x being equal to something. And I want you to think of this f of x thing like one of our parent functions from section 1.6. So in order to shift one of our parent function graphs upward, what we would do is we would take that parent function piece, that f of x, so like x squared, and we would add some number to it. Okay, C just stands for a number. So adding something to our function is going to shift our graph up however many spaces we add. Likewise, in order to move something downward, we're still going to take this f of x parent function piece, but this time we're going to subtract off some number c. So that would shift our graph down however many spaces we're subtracting off. So let's take a look at this example. We're given f of x as x squared, and then we're given h of x being equal to x squared plus 2. So really what we're looking at, this x squared piece is just our parent function f of x, but then we've got this plus 2 on the end. So what that means is we're going to take this parabola picture that we get from x squared. It's drawn out in red on our screen. And all we're going to do in order to get our new picture for h of x is shift that up two units. So I've highlighted some ordered pairs on that red graph, and we can see that like this 0, 0 ordered pair, if we just go up two units, it matches up with this ordered pair from our blue graph, which represents h of x. Same thing if we look at this 1, 1 point. If we just go up two spaces, there it matches up with our graph. This point, again, matches up two spaces. And same thing on the other side. All of these points are just shifted up two spaces from where they started. Another type of shift that we could have is a horizontal shift, so moving things left or right. Uh, the big difference here between a horizontal shift and a vertical shift, a horizontal shift happens inside of parentheses. So that's going to be kind of the key that we're looking for to tell us, hey, we need to move this thing left or right. If there's subtraction going on inside of our parentheses, we're going to shift our graph to the right, however many spaces. If there's addition going on inside of our parentheses, we're going to shift our graph left that number of spaces. So here's an example of a horizontal shift. Again, we're looking at this f of x being x squared, this red parabola graph. Uh, inside of our parentheses, we've got this x plus 2. Now addition inside of the parentheses means a left shift two spaces since it's plus 2. So if we talk about some of these ordered pairs, okay, maybe 0, 0. In order to get our blue picture, we would take this 0, 0 point and go left two spaces. Okay, if we look at 1, 1, we go left two spaces. Okay, if we look at 2, 4, again, we're just going left two spaces. And we could do the same thing on the other side, shifting all of these points left two spaces to get from one picture to the other. So we're going to look at drawing out a couple of examples based on the given functions. So first off, f of x, we're dealing with x cubed. So we've got our cubic graph, kind of this sideways S-shaped curve. I'm going to highlight a few points on here just to help us graph this thing out. So like 0, 0 is on our graph, 2, 8 is on our graph, and negative 2, negative 8 is on our graph. We're going to use those points to help us draw our new picture. So if we look at our function g of x, we've got x cubed minus 1. So we're taking our function f of x and subtracting 1. So that means it's going to be a downshift 1 unit. So what I'm going to do with all of these ordered pairs is just move them down 1 space. So that's going to be a change in the y value. We're going to subtract 1 from these y values. So this 0, 0 point, if we subtract 1 from 0, we get negative 1. So we're going to get the ordered pair 0, negative 1. If we look at 2, 8, subtracting 1 from the y value, we're going to get 2, 7. And if we look at negative 2, negative 8, subtracting 1 from our y value, we're going to get negative 2, negative 9. 
So there's our three ordered pairs for our graph. Now we just do a quick sketch of the curve. For this next example, we're gonna use that same x cubed parent function, but now our new graph that we're gonna draw out looks a little bit more complicated because there's actually two things going on. I see this plus two inside of parentheses. Since it's inside the parentheses, addition means left two spaces. And we've also got this plus one on the end, so we're gonna go up one space. So I've already got my ordered pairs highlighted over here, 0, 0, 2, 8, and negative 2, negative 8. So we're going to go left 2 with all of those, and then up 1. So from 0, 0, go left 2, up 1. From 2, 8, we're going to go left 2, up 1. And from negative 2, negative 8, we're going to go left 2, up 1. And again, now we just have to draw on the curve. So here's what I want you to do with this example. We've got f of x being equal to x squared. I want you to take a guess as to what's going to happen with each one of these functions and then graph them out on your calculator to check your answer. So pause the video, take a guess, check your answers. So with this first one, g of x, I see subtraction going on inside of parentheses. Subtraction means a right shift for spaces since it's minus 4. For h of x, I see a plus 1 inside of parentheses, so that means left 1, and I see minus 2 outside, so that means down 2. For the last one, I see plus 3, so that means left 3, since it's inside of parentheses, and then I see this plus 3 on the end, so that means up 3. Last type of transformations for this video, we're looking at reflections, two types of reflections. We could have an x-axis reflection, which happens by throwing a negative out in front of one of our parent functions. The other type of reflection is a y-axis reflection, which happens by throwing a negative inside of our parentheses on our x. So we're going to look at these reflections using a calculator. We're going to deal with the parent function f of x equals the square root of x. I've already got that one graphed out on my calculator, so you can go ahead and hit your y equals button, type in the square root of x, and get your picture. For g of x, we're looking at negative square root of x. So we can see that we threw a negative out in front of our function. So that's like negative f of x. So what we're going to notice is that this graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. It's going to flip down over the x-axis. So if we go y equals, type in negative square root of x, hit graph, there's our f of x picture on top again, but it's flipped down over the x-axis to get g of x. For our next one, h of x, we've got the square root of negative x. So it's like we plugged in a negative x, so it's like f of negative x inside of our parentheses. So we should notice that this is a flip over the y-axis. We're actually going to flip this left over the y-axis. So on your calculator, go to your y equals screen. I'm going to arrow down to the third one and type in the square root of negative x. Now the calculator actually puts the parentheses in there, so it's a negative inside of the parentheses, meaning a y-axis reflection. Hit graph, and here's our function f of x on top, but now h of x is right here, so it's flipped left along this y-axis. For our last one, k of x, we've got negative square root of x plus 2. So really what's happening here is we've got the negative f of x plus 2. So we should see a reflection over the x-axis because of the negative out in front of the parentheses. And we should also see a left shift two spaces since we've got the plus 2 inside of the parentheses. If you graph that out on your calculator, here's the picture you're going to get. So f of x is up here on top k of x is over here, flipped down over the x-axis, and moved left two spaces. So here we go, last example, we're looking at f of x equals x to the fourth power. Its graph looks like the one that's given to you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the graph of some functions, and we're going to write the equation based on that picture. So here are the two graphs we're going to take a look at. Now these are both x to the fourth functions, just like we were looking at up above. So what we're going to try to do is write the equation for each one of these based on what we see happening in the picture. So with this first one, I'm going to call this one g of x. 
very first thing that I see is my picture got flipped over. Well, if you remember that x-axis reflection stuff, that's like throwing a negative out in front of your function. So since we're dealing with an x to the fourth function, it's like negative and then our x to the fourth inside of parentheses. I also see that this graph was shifted up a few spaces. It looks like three spaces. So if we remember our vertical shift stuff, up means plus three spaces on the end. If you look at this picture over here on the right, I don't see any reflections happening, but I do see a couple of shifts. I see a shift to the right and I see a shift down. So let's call this one h of x. Since we've got a shift to the right, we know that there's some subtraction happening inside of parentheses. So we've got our x minus, looks like we moved two spaces, and this is still a to the fourth power function. And then it looks like we went down one space. So on the end, we need a minus one. That's it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.